Good morning, everybody, to The Social Show. As per usual, this is your one-stop shop for all things CSI and CSR related. And today we've got such an amazing show. I'm so excited. And I really hope that you um, are having a great day and a great morning because it really is a beautiful morning. And it's time that we start talking up and we start speaking up about the things that are not going so well and the things that are going well. Remember, we're all about making sure that uh, the, 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 the mantra of our every single day is hope and good stories and good news and just making sure that our country is protected in all its glory. As per usual, I'm going to start off the day with the news. Pick and Pay has launched a new super animals collection and this time it's focused on South African animals which will be given out as a pack for collectible cards every time consumers spend 150 at any Pick and Pay. The campaign will run until the 4th of June or until the animals cards run out, whichever is first. There are over 100, 100 cards to collect and swap and all categorized into major biomes in South Africa, wetlands, ocean, savanna, Fainbos coast, Namakaru, thicket, uh, succulent, Karoo, and forest collectors are encouraged to replace them in the correct slot in the special edition collectors album and learn more about animals that inhibit these biomes the facts of each animals have also been arranged on the card in such a way that kids can enjoy competing against each other in a fun game comparing act and the collectors album once filled with trivia and uh, educational activities will sell, as I said, at uh, Pick and Pay for 20 rand with one rand from every album sale going to Sand Parks. In a recent uh, state uh, press release, uh, Pretorius, who is the head of the campaign, said uh, they have a relationship with Sand Parks. This is Pick and Pay. Um, and through their already like the Kids in Parks program, which takes over 5,000 children from underprivileged areas into South Africa's national parks every year. And this makes a difference to each child who visits the South African famous parks. Okay, in other news, we have... Uh, Mimi Woman CEO and founder Ramona Kasavan will be reaching out to disadvantaged women in rural areas to raise awareness on Mimi Bizbox on this Freedom Day. Now, Mimi Bizbox is a business in a tool in a box tool rather whereby a disadvantaged woman can sell affordable sanitary pads in their local community, thereby creating an independent living for themselves. Mimi Bizbox is a business in box tool. As I said, that um, hopes to see how women have, you know, obviously women have uh, historically paid second fiddle um, to their male counterparts in earning an income, um, despite the demographic fact that women increasingly have to step up as the sole breadwinners in their families, explains Kasavan. She also said that the South African census, st- census statistics of 2011 reported that 14% of population's households are headed by women and five of how the households have female breadwinners where a married woman is the head of the household for such women says Kasavan taking control of your financial future is no longer a matter of choice but a matter of absolute necessity women have the right to financial freedom as well as a freedom to choose any education they want and that was from Kasavan who is as I said the CEO of Mimi Bizbox lastly in our news Unfortunately, the entries have closed for the Global Impact Challenge for the Singularity University. Now, this challenge is an open is open call to innovators, entrepreneurs, scientists, and technologists to foster moonshoot innovations and start up that it pos- and startups that positively impact the lives of people living in southern Southern Africa. The goal is to hold a Southern African GIC to identify a diverse uh, number of talented uh, innovators in Africa who can put f- can put forth creative solutions to long-standing problems. Once applications are reviewed, we look forward um, uh, to seeing or welcoming the winners to the nine-week global social. Uh, solutions program in singularity university and uh, that concludes our news for today thank you so much
Okay, welcome back to The Social Show. As you know, today I'm talking about humanitarian art. What is it? What is what is it about? If you don't know, today is going to be the day that you know. I have a really lovely guest with me. I have Yakima Weina, yes. who is a, a humanitarian artist. Correct. Yeah, so can you just tell us briefly about what motivated you to pursue this specific career? Because I haven't met or come across any <laughs> humanitarian artist in a while. Okay. Yes. Cool. Um, I did my degree in fine art um, and film, adverts. And when I left, I wanted to find a way that I could bring my skills to the community. So I created a, a, a foundation in a way that I could find art, if it's music, film, um, debate, whatever element that, that speaks to art, to see how we could help environment, humanities, all those type of elements that affect the planet yeah. and humanity, yeah. basically. So um, I have a company, well, it's my own MPO, okay. called um, Intent Conscious Media. Okay. And I work with other documentarians okay. or artists or musicians that want to pay it forward. Yeah. So whoever I come across that's interested in such things, uh, we do projects together. And then every little element, if it's the music or if it's the actual documentarian or the cameraman or whatever that wants to pay it forward, they can come together. We do need sponsorship, so it's always a big issue for us Typically. because we travel, yeah. we do projects local and yeah. overseas. Yeah. So like um, the latest documentary documentary we did was in India. Okay. So it was quite difficult and it was v intense experiences that I don't think people are aware of yeah. that happens behind the, s yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. When people watch a documentary, they're like, they just see the visual on the screen, but they have no idea what we go through. Yeah. And we, at the end of the day, we do it for our planet. Definitely. And we do it to, to create a message or to, I believe energy goes where it recognizes itself. So if we put out good energy, yes, we, in a way, bring it towards us. Lovely. I want to ask, actually, just from yes. a personal point of view, what or who is your favorite artist in, in this category of, hum, you know, being humanitarian? Oh, no, that's difficult. Uh, I think William Kentridge is incredible. Lovely. Um, the things he did concerning political sciences yeah. and, and even his background. He's a Vitsi, which is cool. Um, I can relate to him in that. I think <laughs> Vitsi is an amazing foundation and an amazing environment yeah. to explore because you meet amazing people Agreed. that will change your life. And I think... William Kendridge was an incredible South African artist for me. There are artists, I must admit, because I did fine art. Yes. Uh, visual artists like Frida Kahlo and artists oh, like that yeah. that have always impacted me. But I think humanity art is a environment, it's, it's new. Yes. I, I think we've all, art is about humanity. Yes. It's, it's an expression of who we are. So, but I think uh, it's a bit of a difficult one because I think everyone contributes to different humanity art because yeah. we are human so we we live it yeah and i think what's important is when you see a visual or you see a painting or you hear music it's the death of the author so yeah. basically you've created something you've put it out there and it's there's new interpretation there's new emotional connection everything's different but at the end of the day i think all art concerns yes. humanity you know, I want to throw a little bit of a curveball. Um, mm. and I don't know how politically affiliated you are or yes. you know about what's happening in the country. Yes, I'm sure you are. Um, a recent picture, or rather a painting just came out uh, uh, by a really, I think, amazing artist, yes. Ayanda Mabulu, where he depicted Zuma, Zuma yes, yes, our president, our yes. president Zuma, as well as our late president, uh, um, Nelson Mandela, yes. and in a, quite a conflicting uh, position, <laughs> or con yeah. What yes. would what are your your thoughts about that that specific painting and and the reactions um, that were, were 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 visible not only in in, in media uh, social media but also just uh, the reactions from the political elite. I find I think art is very very powerful. Yes, it can upset people. I remember the other day I saw. Um, the latest uh, cartoon from Superior, and it upset a lot of people. Mm. I don't know if you know the one I'm talking about. No. The Rape of the Country. Oh, yeah. And okay. it really, really frustrated and upset a lot of people. I've dealt with people that have been raped. Mm. I know it's a very, very difficult yeah. topic. But that, pe that artwork, that cartoon, it's not really a cartoon. It loses that, like, oh, it's joking yeah. or whatever element of cartoon. 
that is an exceptional, powerful tool mm. because it brought up the issue. Mm. Art is supposed to make us look at the problems at hand. We're not supposed to just look behind, look away. We are supposed to deal. deal. And art does that. Yeah. So people, even if they're upset, I saw a post that someone was very upset with mm. that zero PR piece because it brings up issues within themselves. Yeah. But the reality is he's facing it mm. for you. Mm. He's creating power for you. So this latest painting you're discussing, it is an issue yeah. that we as South Africans have to face. Yeah. So we can't just be like paint pretty pictures. Yeah. There are incredible people in history, like I'm just going to bring up Hitler, yes. that painted pretty pictures. Yes. Pretty little landscapes. Yes. And now think what was associated with that man. And those are the paintings he painted. It wasn't his reality. It was not his reality. So we're not going to paint little beautiful pictures of a situation. We as South Africans, we do have democracy within yes. ourselves. Yes. Even though we have issues to think, oh, we really have democracy. One thing I've noticed, yes. I've traveled a lot in my life. South Africans can talk. Yes. They can speak and yes. they can share how they feel. There are countries you go to that you cannot, you don't even have that opportunity. You don't have the opportunity to speak up. Mm -hmm. You speak up and you, in some countries like in Korea, you want to... to um, have a Christian lifestyle or or believe in what you believe, you'll get locked up. Yeah. Because certain countries do not believe that you can practice religion. In mm. this country, we have so many freedoms. Yeah. And we take that for granted. Yeah. Allow this art to bring up our issues. Yes. Because we need some sort of foundation in order to do that. How else are we going to do it? Yeah. Before, people in this country were oppressed. Through our art, this is a man that's discussing, a man that also faced oppressions, yes. knows what those oppressions are about, yeah. and now he's discussing it through his visual art. Yes. And in this country, if we supposedly have true democracy, that is the way to democracy. Definitely. And I've heard so many crazy, um, uh, you know, um, threats on his life, not only threats on, yeah. on and, and also just getting him, I mean, ANC officials, a lot of people want to get him off. So I really... I really agree with you when you say we have to bring them up and we have to deal with them. And then, um Brandlive.co.za. Okay, now going back to your work. <laughs> <laughs> Which projects have really changed what you thought you knew about the ecosystem, oh, about wow. the environment, ah. about people? You know, sometimes you think you know, especially because I'm also a bitsy. Okay. So well, I know <laughs> you get yes. you go with this really great foundation and then like you what? get into the world and you're like things change. Things change and I was wrong, or now I was right. Whatever the case may be, what, yes. which were the projects that really changed what you thought you I knew? I think what was very, very important for me when I graduated, well, when I left school, was that I travelled for two years. Okay. So it gave me a foundation of, before I went into vids, mm -hmm. because I'm just going to put it out there: fine arts is a very difficult subject to do because it's an expression of yourself on a canvas, yes. and you get annihilated. Oh my word! You get critiqued. Yes. So I was very thankful that I travelled. Yeah. I had the opportunity to travel. I travelled to Vietnam. I travelled to countries that changed my perspective and made me grow. Okay. But talking about a film or a project that really changed my life was my latest documentary. Okay. I was in a country that had no money. We were in dire situations. I was in India during the time when they reclaimed the 500 rupees and the 100 rupees. And it was this major thing. Wow. There was no money for mm. us. And because we were tourists, uh, not tourists, because we're not from India, I don't have an Indian bank account, it was okay. worse. Mm. So we, one minute, were in the middle of the Himalayas. We were in the forests and we came back to a country with no money and Donald Trump what became the president of the United States. So this is what we came back to, leaving the the, the place that we were in. Yeah. But now coming back to where we were, the Himalayas, people are not aware, when they look at the Himalayas, you think of high mountains, you think of ice, yes. you think of snow. Yes. So we were in a, bit of a lower, mm -hmm. a lower state, we were yeah. in the green Himalayas. And they are suffering terribly with drought. Yeah. So it affected us quite badly because we were on the understanding that we're going to go find snow leopards and we're going to create conservation and try and help. That was the, that yes. was the initial plan. Yeah. I did go there to help a amazing organization called Himalayan Ecotourism. Yeah. They found me and they said, you know, come through and make us a sustainable documentary. Not for the world. Yes. For the people there. Yeah. So it was an incredible opportunity because you had to think completely out the box. There is a foundation in how we approach 
the world. Yes. It's, it's a basic, how like BBC or whatever, you know your market, your target yes. market. This was different. Yeah. We were communicating to people with a completely different culture to us. And this is where things changed. Yeah. Before I left, my mother asked me, how are you going to approach these people that have a completely different understanding of the world as you do? Because they don't understand that they are in one of the most vulnerable areas on the planet mm. to climate change. But th- anyway, they live a more harmonious life to nature than all of we that we do in this environment. However, those people we rely on, mm. they their understanding of the environment affects every one of us. Mm. And that was was amazing when we got there. We're like, this is real. We could see, we spoke to these women. I don't think anyone's ever asked these women these questions. Mm. And what was so special in this documentary is I took the approach because in my project, I've got uh, a new project called um, My Voice Camera My Voice Camera Project. Okay. Where we give women and children an opportunity to speak. Okay in areas that they wouldn't usually have an opportunity to discuss how they, what they feel about their environment. Okay. So when we got there, we spoke to women and we asked, how's the environment changed or how's your ecosystem changed compared to when you were a child to now? Mm. And they'll show you the snow used to be to their shoulder length, now it's at their waist. And that hits you. It affects mm. you. And we speak to children and it's hectic because these women are saying they never think of it. They think... We need to change today for our kids because our part, our, our, you know, when we were children, it was much easier. You know, the seasons were more um, calm or, or more solid to, to harvest. Now they're erratic. There's erratic mm. water. And this is going to affect our kids. Mm. And the amazing thing is that that really, really, I think, touched me because I went and I sat with the little girl, our mm. main star, her name's Janisha. Okay. Janisha means go darkness okay. in Hindi. She's the, the driving force in our documentary called To Wake Buddhi. Um, what's amazing about her is that she has nerves palsy, so she's disabled on her arm and arm. And how this little five-year-old, that always gets me crying, but I'm not going to, today I'm going to be good. You're going to be strong. I'm going to be strong. <laughs> um, how she comes to me and she says to me, you know, this arm doesn't work. Will you please help me? Like, put a jacket on or whatever because she has this mission to save the forest around her yeah five-year-old and what the main ambition of the story was is that the fires happening there are very intense like one morning i woke up and i saw this beautiful i thought it was a mist and i took a time lapse and the guy came to me and said to me that's smoke and i thought what that's smoke Oh. So he's like, yeah, that is smoke. Because what's happening is that they don't have enough knowledge on the forest fires that are happening there. And they are man-made mm. for reasons of greed. They're, yeah. they're not reasons of sustainability. It's just greed. It, it's greed. And yeah. it's an amazing organization because they've they've made a eco-friendly stove. And they are teaching the woman to become more empowered yeah. and become more sustainable to the environment because they are the nurturers of it. Definitely. Actually, just talking about uh, To Wake Booty, yes. let's talk a little bit about your vision for the for the project. I know okay. you said it changed. I know that a lot of yes. things, uh, you know, rattled you yes. a little bit. But what is it that you think people are going to get now when they sit down and they watch the documentary? And where can they watch it as well? Okay. What was amazing reaction that I actually got from Kondile Sekusana, the gentleman that was on your show, yeah. um, he helped me. He's amazing. I, like part of my life as well mm-hmm. we're partners in crime and a lot of things we do Lovely. and he 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 started showing the documentary on his page into certain people and what was beautiful is that immediately I got a reaction from one of the people who showed that I wanted was this is a child talking yeah this is our kids mm. and this little girl is aware of what's going on around her and she's not happy mm. for a five year old to say you are destroying my planet Please wake up, yeah. you know, without these trees. And she says in the documentary, without these trees, we're dead. Mm. For a five-year-old to understand that, a five-year-old shouldn't think like no. that. No. And this is pushing these these kids and women to be aware of what's going on in the environment. So what I want from it is I just want people to sit down and think of their children. Basically... What's going to happen if we don't treat our trees with more respect? Mm. Universally. 
not just in India. In India, yeah. This area is very important, so I would like people to think just in their own daily lives, how can they improve? Yeah. Because I've had people come to me and say they watch shows on Discovery or whatever about these whalers, these people that go out and try and fight these. And it's a little dinky boat compared to a huge ship. Yeah. And they're like, but how is that person even going to make a difference? It's their intention. Yeah. They can save one whale's life. You can sa- save one tree's life. You are making a much bigger, you, you're becoming a part of such a big picture that it will change the planet. And believe me, the planet does not need us to, mm-hmm. to live. Mm. It, we need it. Yeah. We need that planet to survive. Yeah. So I know there's lots of issues around climate change that does people really think we're so significant that we can really change weather. We can mm. because it's a group consciousness. Yes. And also there's too many. It's overpopulation. So we need to become more wiser. And just the main thing is respect. I just want people through this documentary to gather, understand, understand and gather some respect. Definitely. That's, that's the main thing for me. I don't want the universe to become now eco-friendly and go hug every tree they see. It wouldn't <laughs> be bad. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that respect is such an important force in how we treat nature, yeah. how we treat animals, how we treat one another. Respect. And this documentary, I just feel, I hope it creates some foundation of respect definitely i know it was earth day just the other day on the yes. 22nd of april and i did a few of my um you know investigating and i just found out what south africans are doing for earth day yes. and it was so scary because i think i don't even think 10 percent of the population of south yeah, africa yeah. knew it was earth day let exactly. alone what it is they need to do yes. so i completely understand the concept of respect and also just knowing that you're not far from the environment no, a lot of people think of course they're beyond it or better than the environment but they're part of it so i completely agree with you um i know you're a part of a few programs that are with kwandile that i had previously on my show (laughs) um tell me a little bit about your program tell me a little bit about that's about the work that you've done tell me a little bit about what you're doing in south africa currently what you're thinking of doing what are your plans going forward okay um, our main project is getting a university in, yes. in, in Brackpan, yes. in Ekuleni. And we actually have had some good news concerning that. Lovely. I don't want to say anything at this point. Yet, okay. But it actually is good news. Lovely. Um, it's a project that my father is very passionate about. And it was my grandmother that felt that education needs to be more prominent in Ekuleni because we are a powerhouse of this country and we do not have a university. Okay, uh, uh, we 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 don't have a, a university, and in, and it's very important that we do have one. Yes. So that's one of our projects that we've been working on, um, and it's been an amazing adventure because we face people that don't necessarily see your vision, yeah. and that is not easy. But yeah, con- constant uh, pushing, positivity, all those things is what is going to change these things at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things that we're working towards Lovely. In, in South Africa. Um, another thing we're working on is, is in screenings in townships yes. or films. Helping people get a platform. Yes. Also what's lovely is that documentaries about townships um, yeah. directing to that audience. And that was another thing in To Wake Budi is that you're speaking to the people that are living in those environments or in those locations making them think Recognition. That's another thing yeah. I did not bring up. Yeah. I think in my documentary that's also very, very important is recognition. Yes. And that's in a lot of the projects we do. You're recognizing people that are usually put in the darkness. Yeah. Your life's not that valuable, so so basically you stay there. You keep quiet. We want to recognize yeah. the people that have amazing voices yeah. and actually make South Africa what it is. Yeah. And they definitely do. Some of the people we've come by can really change this country. Yeah. So that, that's another thing uh, we've been working on. And then we have another project called uh, Project Tali. Project Tali um, is actually towards children in townships, making them uh, have fun or enjoy environments that they wouldn't usually. Uh, th- and also through their loves of in humanity. So let's say if it's music, literature, whatever, we try and push children to do artwork or do that type of media based on environment. So they see that we can we can protect our environment through our arts, yeah. Basically, so that's Project Tali, okay. Um, and it's a documentary about a young little girl that lives in a world with with no water, 
and very little water. Yeah. And through the concrete environment that she lives in, she creates this idea of a beautiful environment through chalk. Wow. So she sketches her environment that she wishes it to be. And then at the end, you actually see the environment she's stuck in. Mm-hmm. But her imagination, wow. Wow. her strong imagination is what creates power and yeah. hope. Yeah. And I feel that's a big thing in a lot of my documentaries is is I concentrate on stories of hope and change instead of negativity. I Beautiful. do not want to pry on the negativity. I do not want to waste my time on the negativity because it's pointless. I try and look for stories in this country or in the world that I know can make a change. Yes. And that is my motif, my, my motto Your in vision, life. yes. My vision in life. Yes. Is to concentrate on stories in South Africa or wherever it might be that bring hope. Lovely. I love the fact that you're using art because I think it's such an important um, tool that people aren't necessarily using as, 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 as you know, um, an agency free a voice. Yeah, a voice. So yeah. I think that's beautiful. Lastly, where can people get a hold of your okay. new documentary or any work? All Give right. us all of the details. <laughs> and also, if people want to sponsor, remember yes. this is the time you can get a hold of Yakima on the ne- on the following on the following it's, handles. We really do need help. <laughs> we do. <laughs> There's times that we. Um, so, okay, so you can see Buddhi on uh, To Wake. So it's T O W A K E, Buddhi, B U D D H I dot com. Um, and on there, you can contact us. There's a contact page that you can send us a message. And also, there's an initiative and projects page okay. showing all our projects associated with To Wake okay. um, that they can contact us. So they can contact me on the site. They can also get me on my email address, which is K I. Okay, so K for Kilo, I for India, M for Mary, M for Mary, I for India, 8812 <laughs> at yahoo.co.uk. And yes, they can get us there. And then I'm on Facebook, uh, Yakima Wena or Intent Art. Okay. Lovely. And um, if you guys want to know a little bit more, we'll have all of that information on our social TV pages on Facebook as well as on my personal uh, Twitter page. Um, so we're going to be running that. Thank you so much for, for coming in and telling us a little bit more about what you do. Um, and also, I love your vision and I hope it goes much. from strength to strength from today onwards. Thank you, um, thank you for coming through. No problem. I just want to say a message to South Africa yes. or whoever's listening. I feel that every single one of us as South Africans have an obligation to make this country the best we it can possibly be. And I think Mandela has started that. And I think it's very, very important that we continue that legacy. And every single one of us, instead of one Mandela looking at, you know, at this amazing man, we need to make ourselves have that essence within ourselves. Because at the end of the day, we can make a difference. It doesn't matter for who, we can change our South Africa. Definitely. So, yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Lovely. Bye. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Who got brands talking? Brandlive.co.za.